Happy Halloween, my planet coaster friends. <laughs> hey, oh, it's Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Got something special, a special request as you will. When I did a bit of a survey on the channel asking people what would they like to see in 4K with a better frame rate on the new rig, Tragic Kingdom came up a lot. So that's what we're going to be looking at here today. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you again, all these many years later, Tragic Kingdom created by Kim Attacks, Games for Tom, Enigmandra, and Whitesider. Four legends in this community collaborated on on this project back in October 2018. Wow, that is a uh, planet coaster had barely been out for two years at this point, And now that is over five years ago that I featured this. Uh, what I love here on their Steam page, they said, for all the people who can't handle the park, take a look at this detailed video from Channel 5 Gaming and provided a link to uh, the YouTube video. Now, if uh, they end up watching this video, if you guys could update your Steam page with this new video from here today, or at least provide both, I, I don't think my park my, I don't think my old computer handled the park very very well five years ago. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, we used to run this park at like 5 FPS. And we're getting about 20 with 4,000 gets to the park here today, which is tolerable in my opinion. But this is probably one of the largest parks I have ever opened up in Planet Coaster. And it is all spooky. Definitely the kingpin of the spooky parks. I don't think anything has come remotely close to size, scale, and detail. This is an end-to-end -end mega park after all. So uh, they go to say on their workshop page, a collaboration between Enigmander, Gamester, Tom, Kim Attacks, Whitesider. Welcome to the biggest spooky park in Planet Coaster. No kidding, and I still think it holds that true five years later. Here you can find four themed areas. No matter what you're scared of or afraid of, you'll find it here. Do you dare? Then come in. Um, so there are four main areas. I'll kind of like brush over them. We're going to see them. But the Spooky Woods was created by uh, Games for Tom. The Crooked Village was created by Whitesider. The Pumpkin Village by Enigma. Mandra and the Carnival of Horror by Kim Attacks. And if I want to remember correctly, if my memory serves me true, I think five years ago I said that the Carnival was my favorite area. It had a lot of charm, but we cannot deny that the Spooky Woods has this gigantic dueling wooden coaster, which I also love. So a lot of really fun stuff in this. The part count here they said is one, uh, 164,000 pieces. From my understanding, there have been people that have gotten into the half a millions by now. I have no idea what Candyland was, but um, certainly not the biggest park in Planet Coaster history, but it was definitely at the time one of the biggest. Um, it also says 24 rides and 18 coasters slash track rides. So yeah, I think this was uh, at the time it set the record for the longest park spotlight on my channel's history, and it might even hold that record to this very day as we went over two hours so as a halloween special ladies and gentlemen i'm only bringing you the best even if it's a rerun we're gonna see it in a new light quite literally as you can see from the b-roll i have chosen to do the lighting at daytime this year this time around but we have cranked up the fog so it's still kind of got this eerie look to it but you can actually see things with the light coming in now we'll definitely switch between day and night so you get the lighting and all that but when i opened it up and i was looking at it at day and then comparing it to night, I was like, wow, the clarity, the visuals, there's so many details in this park that I didn't see five years ago because I had all the lights off and everything was like pitch black. So if we're going to refeature something, why not refeature something in a new light, but also, you know, mix it up a little bit. So we're definitely going to ride some of the rides in multiple day, night, perspectives see some of the park and a little bit of both but i definitely think uh i didn't check out anything at daytime five years ago and you could really see a lot more this time around so i'm excited to shine a new light on this here spotlight <laughs> all right let's dive into this halloween special ladies and gentlemen let's get to it good googly moogly <laughs> tragic kingdom returns when i uh saw the steam page that said 2018 i was like no way was this really five years ago boy does time fly right oh my god that's freakish that's frightening 
I, I think what's more frightening than this park is how fast time travels. Oh my goodness. So yeah, these are uh, shoutouts to the, the four different lands, the Crooked Village. Even this, I believe I missed this five years ago when I walked into the park. Pumpkin Village. Um, and I'll, I will I will show you comparisons and then the Carnival of Horrors. Where's the uh, Spooky Forest one? Is there a sign for that? There should be a fourth sign, right? Or maybe it's because we're entering the Spooky Forest now. Yeah, let's, let's uh, flip it over to nighttime. It's still pretty good. But there are a lot of lights and things going on. I definitely think the black silhouettes in the background shine really nicely. There's a lot of colors here. But then we go back to daytime and you get to really see a lot more. It's, it's actually quite a difference. Tragic Kingdom. So we'll do a bit of both. I think that's fair. But I'm pretty sure five years ago I... Uh, Wow. See, I don't even think I would have noticed something like this with the lights off. They're, uh, I'm pretty sure I did the whole spotlight at nighttime. Spider legs. So if, if I did the whole spotlight a particular way, I think it's good to see it in a different way. While also maintaining a little bit of that integrity. So we are currently in the spooky woods. All of this stuff that you're seeing here, this entire quadrant of the park was created by Games for Tom. And I definitely want to hit up this dueling wooden coaster to kick off the episode. Fresh spider legs. Gross. Um, it's also kind of crazy that I was able to let 4,000 guests into this park. I was doing a frame test before and after, and I only lost, like, one frame. So, this is quite amazing that I was like, ah, everybody wants to re-see Tragic Kingdom, but I'm like, it's going to be a tragic episode when I realize even my new computer can't handle it. Uh, turns out, it's capable. Not the best, but it's holding up. Look at this. Let's go! Yes, please. Who hunts more? Choose your car. We're going blue. What is this? Blue! <laughs> so, we'll ride uh, red at night and blue at day. We'll, we'll switch it up. Keep your arms inside. Beware of the spiders. Uh, the coaster stats are most likely going to be very, very similar. So we'll take a look at this one here and then jump right over to the perspective of the second one uh, once we dock. Uh, 1.6 kilometers in length, 106 seconds duration, 89 miles per hour. The biggest drop is 80 freaking meters. Let's go. So daytime, you can see a lot more. Being able to see a lot more, I want to see things from the back of the train. Nighttime, we'll do the good old track view at night so let's get to it
moogly, moogly. I think those quote unquote bunny hills at the end would have launched us out of our seats. Uh, my goodness gracious, what is the airtime count on this? Only four seconds. Oh my goodness. Uh, what's also really crazy about this is we go about as high as the drop tower. That is outrageous. Kicking the uh, episode off with the bang, setting the bar high. Um, what were the coasters even called? The spider hunts. The dueling wooden coaster. I mean, what a landmark in the park. A tall, tall wooden coaster with the Tragic Kingdom logo plastered on the side. It's what calls to you from every corner of the park. Doing things right. Great atmosphere, though. Uh, we got a long ways to go. Lots of ground to cover. Lots of things to see. The crooked, uh, or the spooky woods. Spider screams? Wait, wait, what do we got going on in here? We'll, we'll fast pass it. I don't want to walk by any spiders. Oh, this is the drop tower. Yeah. I want to, I want to see the drop tower. And you can see kind of like the whole park at nighttime a bit. Here we go. Big castle centerpiece in the middle of the park. Love that. Look at all the crooked buildings in the background there over in the crooked village. Looking fantastic. And there goes the dueling coasters. Oh my God, that is terrifying. Wow. Very cool. Are we gonna be able to turn right around for this? I think so. And there it is. That's the whole park. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Bye now. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Pew, pew, pew. Um, how am I getting off? There we go. Pew, pew, pew. Someone's having fun with the fireworks. <laughs> One thing that's also to note about this park is the atmosphere is really great. Or, um, not the atmosphere, the ambience. There's a lot of noise. I can barely hear myself think. It's great. I don't have to put any post-production sounds in. I can just leave it as is. Amazing flat rides. What is the sounds over here? I have to figure this out. I want to find out where all these pure pure pears are coming from. Is it the carousel? Oh, this is not a carousel. It's a chair swing. Oh, yeah. Look at this. The trees are like shooting out fireworks, I think. Can we speed this up? Is it like a little bit of a show? I'll give it a sec to get going here. Some great looking coasters off in the distance there. Now no one wants to go on the chair swing ride. It was fully loaded just a second ago. How depressing is that? I'll go on it, please. Now, if I understand this correctly, these trees were shooting something out. I'm gonna get myself sick, aren't I? Isn't there a better view? Whee! Yeah, they're sparking. They're sparking up. Woo! Oh, they're glowing. Always fun when somebody adds sequences to their flat rides. Turns it into a little bit of a show. Definitely far more entertaining. I might have been wrong about the fireworks, though. Huh. Well, if I hear it again, I'll fly up. Wait! No! It was this! <laughs> the trees are basically giant firework cannons. That's incredible. Love it. it. Might be a little bit dangerous to ride them, though. Okay, I'm going to go back to daytime here, just for a little bit. Like I said, we're going to go between. 
just so he could see things uh, a little bit more clearly. But the fog really does make it still feel like it's a uh, spooky night or something. I don't know. What, is this a cue for a coaster? I love these, uh, what do you call them? Chained up mouths? Yeah, you can fast pass it. Oh, it's a uh, what? Oh, this is exciting. Five years ago, when we visited this park, we had zero guests in the park. Therefore, we never got to ride the go-karts. Let's uh, choose car five for the good old channel five gaming. I'll speed it up and uh, cut to it when it's ready. All right, we'll do a, a lap or so on daytime and I'll do a lap at night. And we'll just take a look around while we let the racer race away. Oh my god. Never before ridden go karts. What a privilege. Amazing. A little bit of a traffic jam through the weave here. Weaving through the spooky forest. Alright. Oh my goodness, there's triggered events. That's a hot mess. Someone's gonna get chopped in half. Can we make it? Go, go, go! This is actually really intricate. Through the fog. Skull Canyon here. The Rubble Raptors. Wow. It's a full Mario Kart circuit. Underneath a giant rib cage? My freaking goodness. Wow. -y. Wow, we haven't even completed the first lap? Is that correct? Might be one of the longest go kart circuits I've seen um, in a park. Wow. Wowzers! And now we're just pulling back in to the station. Isn't there supposed to be a victory lap? The nighttime lighting looked pretty compelling, so I thought it deserved a full run at nighttime, as we've never gotten to actually ride these before. And uh, we'll do POV view this time. Actually sit in the driver's seat for this one. Look at that. The trees are blowing fire out of their eyes. Yeah, the lighting for nighttime is definitely interesting. Pretty amazing stuff. Definitely worth another ride through. Especially considering we never got to ride these before. I think we just took the lead, didn't we? Hey, this guy hasn't skid out yet. Oh, you had such a good streak going. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the spooky go karts created by Games for Tom. Absolutely incredible. So glad we got to ride the go-karts. It only took five years, but we finally got around to riding your go-karts, Tom. <laughs> and it was worth the wait, in my opinion. Very, very cool. I don't know what to look at. There's so many things going on. Uh, is I think this is for a flat ride, but there's a priority pass, so I don't know about that. Would you do a flat ride priority pass? I, apparently so. Usually I feel like priority queues should really only be for the, the coasters. 
It's a lot of extra work building a whole second path. Also, if you do have a priority pass only for the rides, uh, the coasters and main attractions, it helps me indicate um, which ones are actually, or determine which ones are actually coasters and dark rides. But yeah. And it also keeps the guests um, less backed up in the flat rides. When you let the guests into your park finally, especially when you have a park this big. Wait, are we entering the spooky carnival now? This way. Dude, I want to make... Mm, yeah, I gotta cheat for a sec. Okay, after a quick teleportation, I took a quick look around. Want to make sure that we hit some of the uh, major attractions. We have a spooky spin here. I like the half integration of this ride into the spooky house, actually turning this little spinning ride into a bit of a Monte Leone, which I don't think I've ever seen before. That's actually pretty innovative considering how small that ride actually is. Actually being able to do half of it inside of a building. And then it looks like there's one more coaster in the spooky woods over here that I definitely didn't want to miss. Just want to make sure we hit all the main attractions within each of these four themed areas before moving on. And there was uh, one more here for us to check out. So we're going to go take a look at that. And what we have here is the forest runner. Not much of a forest. It's a bit, a bit of a twiggly branch runner. Um, that's a shop. Is this a queue over here? There's the queue. Burm, 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 burm. Um, I definitely, for the dark rides, we'll go night. For the coasters, I'm thinking we'll do both day and night. Why not? So we'll start this one off at day. Woohoo! Got a mechanic fixing it right now. So here's a look at the Forest Runner stats, ladies and gentlemen. Anything that's standing out there, 51 miles per hour, four inversions, almost a kilometer in length. There's a little bit of a traffic jam happening here with the trains. And uh, we got one taken off. I guess we'll do seat view for this to start things off. Here we go. Good googly moogly. I definitely preferred the daytime on that one, and it is quite nice seeing the park at day from such a high up perspective. Am I going down the queue? I don't even know what's happening. It doesn't even matter. We're hopping over. So, where to next? I feel like maybe we'll go visit White Cider with the Crooked Village. I'm gonna save the Spooky Carnival for last because I recall it being my favorite. And if it was in fact my favorite and still is my favorite these many years later, might as well save my favorite for last. What's in here? Is this an Easter egg? Oh. It is, um... Almost 
nostalgic revisiting some of these parks, but at the same time, I've done so many parks over the years. Like this is episode 600 and something, right? And seen so many coasters, over a thousand. It's like, uh, while it's nostalgic and it brings back memories, a lot of it also feels fresh. You know, like I, I'm, I'm already getting lost as if it was my first time in this park, which is really crazy to say. The brain is constantly deleting memories and information, reformatting itself, and we only hold on to glimpses. And, uh... Here I am all these years later visiting a park as if it was my first time ever. I remember the broad strokes, but not the little details. So, <clears throat> and it, it's also just... We're seeing it in a completely different light with the reshade, 4K and all that, so that definitely makes a difference. We got some old tragic toilets. <laughs> I don't want to visit those. The old church. I am assuming this will be a dark ride of sorts. I can barely turn the day of night with the, <laughs> the reshade getting in my way. All right, let's head down into the depths, the belly of the church. Let's see what's going on in here. Everywhere we go in this park, there's ambience, which I absolutely love. Oh, a horror height buried underground. That's freaking cool. None of the guests are... What? What? Why is there... Why am I selecting a camera? What's happening here? Seat view, please. Middle seat. Ooh, I'm excited. We did a couple horror heights for this uh, week's Halloween. Seen some really good stuff. Um, I have I have no recollection of what this one was like. So it's like a first time all over again. Let's go. I'm actually going to be restarting the ride because I think I was fast forwarding it just ever so slightly w just to get the ride going. And that might have caused things to go out of sync just a little bit. And I was thinking as I was riding this, when we featured this so many years back, it probably was completely out of sync. One thing that happens with these horror heights is that they they follow to sync in these mega parks, but everything should now finally sync up so long as I don't fast forward it. So I'm just gonna cut to it when it's ready and uh, everything should hopefully line up, but speeding it up slightly might screw things up. Okay, still a little bit of minor hiccups there. I was hoping restarting without the fast forward would fix that little bit there, and it, 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 it's pretty much resulting in the same results. I love that view there, though. Holy moly. That's beautiful. Yeah, some of these doors just don't want to open. Now, one thing you got to remember... <laughs> there it goes. When this was made by uh, Whitesider so many years ago, 
they themselves were doing it at a reduced frame rate, right? So some of the trigger timings might actually be delayed to compensate for lag. And now we're actually running so smoothly that the, we're going ahead of the triggers. So yeah, horror heights are uh, a, a big mess to do in these super mega mega parks, but still pretty good effort overall. We, we gave it a chance. Um, where has this spit me out? Okay, we came in there. So we're about where we started. I want to go back to daytime here. The Crooked Village is very artsy. White Cider likes to do this kind of crazy Dr. Seuss style builds and um, mix in terrain with really crazy building shapes. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of these builds over here. Gross, 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 gross. Not a fan of Black Widows. Wait, I got turned around. Meow. How did I, uh... Is the old church? The old church might actually be part of the Spooky Woods. We actually never entered into what I thought we would have been. The, um... <clears throat> Crooked Village. This is the entrance to the Crooked Village. Okay, that's good, though. It's good that we stumble across that church because that was, in fact, the final ride for the Spooky Woods. If there are any hidden rides that I missed that were down in crypts or anything like that, we'll definitely find them through the ride list later on. This is what I was talking about. These crazy wobbly wonk builds are completely insane. I actually like seeing a little bit of the greenery and lush colors. Uh, even though we're like daytime and it's still foggy, it, it gives me those uh, beautiful park spotlight vibes. So this is quite refreshing. I think this is an exit. Yeah. Still cool to look at. I still want to see this ride integration though. Look at that. <laughs> so interesting. All right, let's head on in. That would be the cue to that wobbly long ride. <laughs> wow. What a spectacle, what an entrance, all for a flat ride. These creators did not slouch when it comes to theming their rides. Is this another flat ride? Well, we're going to go down it and see what happens. If it's a flat ride, I guess I could check it out. While I did let a whole lot of guests in, a um, majority of the guests wanted to ride all the rides in the uh, forest. There, I don't think there's enough guests to actually cover the footpath distance of this said park here. I think you would need like 12,000, if not more guests to actually fill up all of the rides in this park. I mean, some of the queues alone for, like, the dueling coaster could probably have a, a queue capacity of several hundred. So, yeah, the guests haven't quite made their way over here. I see a few of them walking around. Hmm. Okay, let's, uh... <laughs> yeah, I actually really like the contrast of this green and gray and red. It's quite cool. Very open area. It's kind of feels like a little park, if anything. It's where you get all the leg work in. Oh, we can hop over here. Sorry, I'm being a little bit crazy with my camera, aren't I? I'll try to slow it down. Let's see where this leads us. Ooh, a spooky manor. The haunted house. Okay, this is where we switch it back to night. Most likely a Huntsman Dark Ride if I were to make a guess. Nope. It's a Looney Turns coaster or a Barghest. Ah. Uh, Looney Turns. I think. Yep. The crazy one, Looney Turns. 
There's a look at the stats if you'd like to see them. Nothing too crazy. Almost a kilometer in length here. Five inversions. And there's a bit of a, a backup in the trains here. Let's see if we can find one that's leaving. I have no idea. That This one. This one's coming around the bend. And uh, here we go. Freaking way! While I again feel like I preferred that one during the daytime, there were some really good views and vistas and color pops um, and just good skylines. The nighttime actually offered a lot of light sequences. There were a lot of triggered events going on during nighttime. So I feel like they both offered something different in terms of visual aesthetics for both day and night separately. And um, that is definitely something I didn't do the first time around. So if anything, we're doing things a little bit more thoroughly the second time. This, there's that saying, you always do things better the second time, right? So here's to doing things better. Um, my one worry with that is I'm looking over at my recording. This is 47 minutes. And uh, I'm running some of these rides, multiple perspectives. Although I feel like I'm making a little bit better speed than I was the first time around. Looking at all the little knickknacks and details, maybe um, getting lost up in some of the art a little bit longer than I should have. But uh, spending a little bit of the extra time instead on the rides where the focus kind of should be while still absorbing all of the park. Um, maintaining a steady slow speed all the way through. Wait, what did the sign say? Ghost Town. Ghost Town must be a part of Crooked Village. Yeah, I mean, this looks like White Cider builds to me. Very recognizable build style. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> saying that we're at 47 minutes. And, uh... <laughs> we're only in the second area. So, I always have that saying, though. 
parks and spotlights need to be as long as they need to be. It takes as long as it takes. So if this ends up being longer than the first time around, and we set a new world record for the longest park spotlight, uh, there's no better and more deserving park than that of the Tragic Kingdom's collab. And for such a festive event such as Halloween. So, very spooktacular. I embrace it. We have yet to ever hit like a three hour mark on a park spotlight. Generally, I think two has been the closest we've ever come. So we did a bit of a loop around. I'm seeing all this crazy stuff happening in the background, like up there. There's like a mine train coaster. There's also a train that goes around the whole park, which I do not think I rode the first time. And with how everything's looking at daytime, I definitely kind of want to give it a ride. I've been enjoying the train rides as of recently, especially with the new high def and stuff. Okay, I think this is going to take us over there, right? Let's go on down and see. Oh, it's an exit. Wait. It's an exit to that claw machine. Oh, that's the claw. I am getting a little bit mixed up. I'm going to pause it and cheat for a sec. Okay, teleport. We come back through this side, and then there's more content over here. Which also looks very confusing. And intertwined. Now, this looks like an exit of some sort. But it also looks like an entrance. Hello! This might be a train stop, but it could also be a mine train. I see train tracks and mine train tracks, which is making it extra confusing. Yeah, so this one definitely is the train. So I think that'll be worth giving it a go after we've seen the park and we'll just get like a different perspective. Because if we go on it now, which I was about to do, how to stop myself. Why are there two bridges? Okay, they're coming down this way. That's got to be an exit. This has got to be an entrance. Um, if we go on it now, it might spoil some of the things yet to come. Whereas if we go on it later, we'll just see it from a different perspective. Okay. Where are we headed? Where are we going? This is quite the queue. And this is what I was saying. 4,000 guests is not a lot enough when you make queues this long. I think you can get a thousand of them just in this one alone. <laughs> I wonder if there's any uh, programming in the AI to like actually disperse the guests or if they're all like programmed to like go to the most interesting ride, right? You would think that Frontier would have put something in there saying like, oh, this ride is getting way too much attention. Maybe we should make the guests want to go on other rides. I have no idea how that works in the back end. 1.1 kilometers in length, 54 miles per hour, a little bit of air time on this, uh, 105 seconds in duration, and it is the spell of the mountain. And it is a swinging mine train coaster. So we're definitely gonna go bucket seat for this so we get that swing going on and then I'll try to come up with something different for nighttime. Let's go.
you guys but i've been much preferring the daytime experience on majority of these if not all of these rides and uh it's been quite refreshing seeing the daytime maybe subconsciously there's some a uh, bit of a memory bank there for me going like oh i've seen this at night already and and daytime is offering something new and fresh that i haven't seen before but personally it's the vistas and and trying to compare the the experience as a whole i've been uh visually enjoying things a little bit better because the clarity's much more vibrant. Um, so let me know down in the comments below, have you been enjoying these rides at day or night more, or have you enjoyed them equally? Uh, very curious because I personally feel like this park shines better at daytime, but I also think the fog is helping. Like when you go like this and you see like the bright sky and stuff, it no longer feels like a spooky park, right? We gotta, it still has that little bit of a, a spooky night thing going on here, even though there's some light coming through, but that light just makes it a lot easier to see all these beautiful builds and small little details. They get kind of washed out in the darkness, especially the views and vistas. Um, I think I'm a little bit cornered again. I'm gonna cheat. Okay, uh, I was trying to figure out how we get through. <laughs> and it's no wonder I was getting a little bit lost. The only way to get back is from the way we came. And I don't really want to go that way because we've already been that route. But if we come through here, was it here? Yeah, there's like a little shop or something. Yeah, this little shop. There's a big windy path that takes you all the way here to get some hot dogs. This whole path here doesn't link back up with that path, but it kind of brings us out to the main area. So that does in fact conclude the Crooked Village by White Cider. A little bit more spread out, a little bit, I mean, a lot more arts and stuff going on there, but less attractions overall, but very crazy and intricate uh, um, rides and attractions. Uh, I believe White Cider probably had something to do with the centerpiece. So while that side of the park was a little bit on the shorter side, I also feel that White Cider probably had a big hand in building that centerpiece, so. We'll have to go check that out in a second. There's the Haunted Ring. That's a cool little backdrop. Very fun. Is that just for the exit? It's a massive path. All right, so we should be coming up on the Pumpkin Village created by Enigmandra. I guess... We're still, maybe the Crooked Village has a backside to it that I might have missed? Because this feels very Crooked Village to me. And, um, we're still kind of near the Crooked Village. But you like, it's it's a little bit more of an open, scenic route, this area of the park. But definitely still feeling White Cider vibes. And this line here, I think, sets, uh, they did like quadrants. And they almost divided it by a giant fat path. I uh, Before we go into the pumpkin village, I wanted to see if we can navigate 
So you pass under the castle, but can you actually go in it? I don't think so. But look at this. This is crazy. It would have been really cool to have a coaster going through all of this. It would have been extremely difficult to pull off. Maybe if you did like a launched coaster. Oh, that would have been spectacular. Okay. Here we go. Pumpkin Village by Enigmandra. I see plentiful coasters already. How do we... Is there an entrance? Well, we're going in the side route. Here we go. Now, I believe Enigmander would appreciate if I started their park off with nighttime, as they definitely like to put all the floodlights into their pumpkin builds. Enigmander known for doing amazing artwork with the basic shapes provided in Planet Coaster, then also illuminating them quite nicely with the floodlights, as you can see from all of this craziness. Spinning teacups. Wow. Yeah, some of this stuff is going to definitely shine at nighttime. Same with the uh, Carnival of Horror by Kim Attax. So here we go. Look at that. Our first coaster of the pumpkin village here. We're going to have to work our way around some of these pumpkins. Head on into the spooky house. And in we go. Uh, seeing all this stuff without the Theme Maker Toolkit, the old school spooky wallpaper, I, uh, and the bookshelves. <laughs> this to me is so vanilla Planet Coaster, it's hilarious. It brings back memories of endless creations that all look the exact same. <laughs> oh, but I still love it. All right, we have a, looks to be a corkscrew coaster going up. The Curse of the Pumpkin witch and it's green across the board almost a kilometer in length uh 62 miles per hour three inversions on this and it is in fact the american looping arrow corkscrew coaster i'll cut to it when it's ready That last perspective at the back of the train uh, going through the pumpkin spiral like that was freaking phenomenal. Absolutely love that. Let's go. Let's see what uh, other surprises we can find in the pumpkin village. Now, I'm probably going to stick to the outskirts for now just so I can kind of like work my way inward and make sure we get everything on the outside. And then uh, see what the inside has in store for us. 
Is that the same corkscrew we just went on? I don't think so, no. Look at all those gnarled branches. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Uh, even though the game has spiders in, in it, and Eggmanger had to build one herself. <laughs> oh, that's a creepy. And there's the uh, next train stop. Another train station there. Definitely think we can give that a ride at the very, very, very end. Pumpkin Village train station. Well... Do I start working inward now? Hmm. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of rides on the outside as I was hoping there would be. Just the train station and some shops. So, we'll go into the graveyard, which appears to be a queue right out of the get-go. Since it is a graveyard, it seems only fitting we switch it back to night. And walk on through. To the other side. Why do I feel like I went down this queue before? I probably did. <laughs> Five years ago. Get a little bit of deja vu here. Weird. All right, here we are. It looks like a floorless coaster, I think. Floorless, that is right. A green across the board. A bit of a shorter one. I think this is the shortest coaster in the park so far, but still almost uh, 500 meters in length. These coasters have not slouched whatsoever. None of the guests are really drawn to this one for whatever reason, which means we could definitely go seat view without any flailers. Let's, um, let's give it a go. Short and sweet that one. I definitely think we could pass on the uh, daytime for that one. Doesn't go too hot. We don't get too many views. I have gone down the e entrance and we'll just keep on trucking. Keep on keeping on. I see some more pumpkins. What's going on over here? This looks like a big mansion. Must contain a spooky dark ride of sorts. Ooh, spice pumpkin coffee. I love me a spice, uh, spice pumpkin coffee. Very, very cool. Speaking of which, I have not had one this year. I should go out to uh, Starbucks and get one. I got a Starbucks just uh, like a five-minute walk from my house. Is there a way into this mansion? Nightmare Manor. Ooh hoo hoo. Let's go. Well, found a lot of the guests here. The uh, Pumpkin Village thus far has had the least amount of guests. Seems to me like they're all getting crammed up here at the manor. Not actually making it into the pumpkin park. Yeah, this is a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess a huntsman. Huntsman! Let's go. Uh, Nightmare Manor. Just seemed appropriate, right? While it is only 500 meters in length, it is 300 seconds in duration because of the four miles per hour speed on this guy. Your nightmares lie ahead. Ooh, let's check it out.
Which was my worst nightmare? Uh, <laughs> the nostalgia that I was getting, the flashbacks, 32-year-old Johnny five years ago sitting in this exact same chair <laughs> in a different location doing this exact same ride made me uh, realize that I had just traveled through time. Here I am five years later doing the exact same thing I was five years ago. It's somewhat frightening. <laughs> but also awesome. <laughs> wow. I don't think we're going to be revisiting this park in another five years, guys. This this is it for reruns. <laughs> Even if uh, technology advances yet again, I don't know if I'm going to be doing triple features here. So enjoy it while it's here. A nice little dark ride here or a flat ride in the haunted house. Now, this takes us over to the spooky carnival. But I don't know if we've actually been on everything within the pumpkin patch, so I'm going to cheat. So when we went down here, there was a, an offshoot that brought us to kind of like a spooky graveyard area, but there's a whole inverted coaster, what appears to be an inverted coaster over there that we did not get to check out. It's called the Crypt from the looks of things. And then there's some flat rides kind of tucked in here with the uh, pumpkin teacups. Uh, maybe we took a look at those from a different angle. But I definitely want to check out the Crypt Coaster here. And then I think there was one other thing in this area before we move on to the carnival. Last but not least. Definitely hit up the ride list as well. So here's the Crypt, 500 meters in length. 50 seconds in duration, a bit of a shorter one. We'll start things off with the, I think it's a two-seater. Yeah, it's a two-seater, so we'll just do this. Let's go. is fast coming in hot and heavy at uh 50 miles per hour good googly googly all right now if i remember correctly we can come around this way yeah this whole open plaza area is something that we didn't really get to look at with all of enigmander's fun little halloween blueprints i believe if you go to their workshop you can find all of these little shop, pumpkin shop blueprints um, laid out. And you can download them for yourself to build your own spooky plazas. What is going on with this? Oh, it's like a little skizzer. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> all right. Now we can head on out. I believe we've explored everything within the pumpkin patch and we can head over to what I remember to be my favorite area from Kim Attacks, the Carnival of Horrors. And if I did miss anything, we'll be checking out the ride list near the end of the video just to double check, just to be sure. The Car of the Dead. So, I mean, carnivals traditionally are better at nighttime 
However, as I was getting the B-roll, there were some certain angles and uh, areas where I was like, holy good googly. Um, some of the stuff just looks incredible at daytime. So I'm gonna wanna do a, a nice mix here, but all the carnival lights definitely show through during the night. Oh my goodness, I remember looking at this. This is the uh, third ring ride in this park. Almost every one of the creators involved in this collab other than, was it White Cider? I'm not sure. Or other than Nick Nick Mandra uh, chose to do a ring ride. Very cool. <laughs> Photo booth. It's vibing down here. I really feel like I'm in a carnival. This is great. Oh, what do we got here? I can't read that. We'll find out when we get there then. I don't know what- Ooh! Ooh! Demon drop. Green across the board, it's the wooden Hop the Gaps Friction Wooden Coaster. Interesting, it's been a hot minute since I've been on one of these. We'll go seat view and uh, ride it both day and night. Let's go. No spooky carnival music on this one, unfortunately. A bit sad about that. Let's see if I can not find some uh, spooky carnival music for the day run. I don't even know. I, I have such a hard time going spooky carnival. <laughs> I don't know why there was other stuff favorited there. I didn't remember doing that. We're going daytime spooky carnival music and we're going to get into the front train, train one, but we're going to normally they're like one long train, but separated. Yeah, see that one's going up. We got to go up this one. Here we go. Figured it out. Where's my freaking carnival music? I thought I'd just put music on here. Yeah, look how nice this looks at daytime. I love this park at day. It's crazy cool. Well, so much for my attempt of putting spooky carnival music on the ride. <laughs> you win some, you lose some, but that's okay. We've had more wins than losses on this park. <laughs> All right, where to? Let's head down this back alley. That looks like a second entrance coming from a different area. And we have all the midway games maybe down here. Get some food, shooting gallery. Yes, here we go. Amazing. The hammer game, test your strength. We have Bruce, why not? <laughs> this is hilarious. I should probably go back tonight for a little bit here. It is a carnival after all. Wheel of misfortune. That is unfortunate. Wheel of Misfortune. Isn't that like a dude perfect thing? <laughs> What's, uh, is this the train ride going back here? Very cool. Where am I going? Is this just a little, ooh, I remember that ride. It's like the, uh, the Death Valentine's boat ride. <laughs> wow. Another, uh, time travel moment. Some nostalgia, some, uh, deja vu. 
crazy. Well, I guess that's what we're going on next. The Tunnel of Love. Boy, oh boy, do I remember this one. Very cool. I think we'll just do it at nighttime only. Since it is a bit of a dark ride, it has a lot of interior, indoor stuff. Um, there might be too many boats on this. <laughs> One too many uh, river rapids going around here. Watch out for the bushes. Work our way through the bushes of love. And to the river rapids, we have arrived. Poor people, they're getting jammed up, backed up here. It's the tunnel of love. I always love finding the right seat here. Oh, look at that, we nailed it pretty quickly. So the seat that you want is this one, and off we go. Wow, freaking we! That is a great River Rapids. I love the theming on it. You have the Valentine's love ride, but it's all broken and uh, turned to horrors. It's great, absolutely freaking great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's a Looney Turns here uh, at both day and night. Uh, as I saw from like a bird's eye view, which I'll have to show you guys in just a sec is the the color palette used on this coaster looks really phenomenal what's going on over here oh this must be the coaster that we saw from the perspective of the uh tunnel of love is this a um suspended steel well, i guess we'll find out it is. Great variety of coaster types in this park here today. So we're looking at the flight of the gargoyle. And it's taken off now, so we might as well get right to it. Starting things off with a good old seat view. Let's go.
heavy. Holy moly. Oh, man. I wish there was a little bit longer dro uh, dragged out that momentum a bit more. But look at this. As you come in here, you can see all of these vibrant colors. The oranges, the reds, the yellows. A whole warm color palette here with this crazy looking coaster. I mean, I just love the look and atmosphere of this. The cannons and the acrobats. That is looking sensational. And this is what I was saying, even though it's a carnival and it's best at night, there's something about it that I really love during the daytime here because the color palette is so vibrant. So we have a witch train over here, which will head in during the nighttime. Probably check it out twice, because why not? Why almost went up the exit. Wouldn't be a park spotlight without going up an exit. <laughs> I did it probably five years ago, almost repeated it five years later. Ah, the witch train. <laughs> All right. We're making good speed here, though, considering I've been riding all the coasters twice, and I feel like I've been thoroughly looking at everything. Here's the ride stats, a kilometer in length, 140 seconds duration, 50 miles per hour, five airtime counts. Um, we want the other train, and we're going back of the train. But yeah, like, uh, I feel like I've been taking my time. If the last one we did five years ago is two hours long, uh, I'm about an hour and 35, but then there's editing, and I'm sure I edited it years ago as well. We might end up tying the, um, the, um, the, the, the length of the last video but somehow rid all the coasters twice a little bit more efficient I guess I don't know whoa I just broke my neck <laughs> oh my god Well, that coaster had all sorts of problems. <laughs> Maybe uh, it just had something to do with being at the back of the train. Let's see if it works any better during uh, a track view. Maybe that'll help it along a little bit better. We'll see.
Okay, well, still a little bit of a uh, high-speed neck breaker, that one. Definitely preferred it in the track view. Holy good googly moogly. So I just, um, while I was waiting for that second one to start up, decided to look up Tragic Kingdom that we featured so many years ago. And it does say that it, the video length was one hour and 46 minutes after editing. So uh, I think I'm about an hour and 40 at this moment um, without editing. So we might actually end up having a near same length, but probably a little bit longer than the first time around because I do intend on riding the train ride this time. But it is surprising because, like I said, we're making good time because I feel like I've done a pretty good job at thoroughly passing by everything at a, a pretty slow and steady pace like I would normally do um, throughout all the years. But I guess my the way I spotlight things is definitely different it has evolved, it has changed. Um, but riding all the rides twice, I figured that this video would have ended up being twice as long. But I guess not. The rides themselves are kind of short, so it only extends the... Uh, every ride we go on extends the video by just a few minutes, if that. So here we go, we got like a... What is this? A hoax ride, right? A ghost train hoax. Yeah, let's see what this one's all about. I'll wait till uh, one comes in... Oh. I almost picked it up and moved it. That wouldn't have been good. Okay, we'll try to get on this one here. All right, pretty fun little hoax ride there. A traditional little um, spooky house tour. Spooky carnival tour. And uh, where where did I just come from? I came from that direction, maybe? I am definitely getting turned up now. Love the little trailer dogs. Little picnic area. Now, I've been trying to save the best for last here, which I believe is this. Well, the coaster goes through here, but this is not what I was looking for. The man on spikes. That's kind of cool. I think this is it. Psycho Circus exit. Darn it. Why does the uh, exit look like an entrance? This has got to be it. Here we freaking go! We'll go the long way. <laughs> yeah, this might end up being my favorite ride in the whole park. Although I really like the wooden coaster at the beginning. Um, this one just has, it's so playful. It's so ridiculous. Out of all the things in this park, uh, probably the most memorable one to me. And I remember raving about this so many years back. Almost a kilometer in length, 120 seconds in duration, 50, 48 miles per hour, four inversions and 10 airtime counts with green across the board. Definitely riding this both at day and night. We'll do seat view night and something else day. Let's freaking go.
Let's go. Absolutely love everything about that. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, so many fun, playful little scenes, triggered events, and definitely shined at daytime, as I mentioned. Just look at this. Reminds me of one of those old mouse trap board games. <laughs> like, this is just crazy. And the visuals really come to life at daytime, in my opinion. It looks and feels great. Color palette-wise, it, it looks the most playful. It's the most fun to look at. Overall, I think my favorite ride in the whole park. Uh, it's just so creative, so interesting, so innovative, all the good stuff my goodness gracious and i think that brings us back to the end of the park other than the train ride so i'm just gonna double check the ride list so give me a second here okay i did find another ride called the upside down manor and uh it was tucked away at the back here whoops at the back of the park at the top of the carnival area upside down manor it is the second spooky huntsman of the park very cool definitely gonna have to ride this one at night let's check it out Okay, quite a different experience to the one that we saw over in Enigmandra's area, that having everything in this mansion upside down. Uh, quite an upside down experience compared to what we experienced before. <laughs> All right, back to the ride list for me. Well, 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 hello there, dirty rats. Uh, snuck over here by the throwing uh, incredible knife is a fun little wild mouse, a spinning wild mouse coaster that we uh, almost missed here. I don't know why I can't click it for some reason. What's going on here? Here we go, dirty rats. Here's a look at the results if you want to see them. This one's taken off. So we're gonna jump ahead to this car. Three shade on, middle seat, off we go. Oh my god, those spins were horrendously fast. I wonder what my frame rate was before. <laughs> that would have been a slideshow. Holy good googly moogly. How, uh, <laughs> how on earth? No freaking way. Wow freaking we. This tiny little staircase here takes us up to what I missed was a queue in the forest. I don't know if this is considered the, uh, what was it called? 
the spooky woods or the uh, crooked village. But we have another Hop the Gaps wooden coaster that takes us through the gnarled forest. It's called the Wood Jumper. It's green across the board, it's almost 650 meters in length, 10 airtime counts. Good googly. All right, we have to figure out how to ride this thing. Okay, this one's taken off. Let's go. I think that's my preferred uh, hop the gaps out of the two in this park. Uh, glad I went through the ride list to find that. What a nice hidden gem. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, we have the, uh, the train. Now let's just take a look at this park from a bird's eye view before we move on. What a contrast, as you can see from the uh, spooky carnival over here. Lots of color, lots of vibrance. Definitely excels at both day and night with all of the color palettes and lighting going on. Then we have the uh, the old spooky woods. While it does have just a lot of flatness and twiggly branches, this area of the park definitely excelled the most in terms of content and rides. A massive wooden coaster. I wouldn't hop the gaps at the back here. We had some uh, dark rides down there as well. Oh, how coaster over here. There was a lot of coasters, a lot of rides, and I think even the go-karts resided over here. That is right. So in terms of like fun factor, you enter into the park and the first thing you're going through is the spooky woods and you're getting a lot of the best rides right here. White Ciders area over here offered a lot more of that fun abstract art. Definitely the winner on creativity and art. A little bit more open, spread out. It gives me a little bit of Alice in Wonderland vibes too, mixed with Dr. Seuss and the Nightmare Before Christmas. It's really a crazy mashup, but it is a lot of paths and a lot of openness. So more of like a, a sprawling, nice walk through the park kind of thing with a lot of really good uh, art to look at. Then you got the pumpkin patch over here, excelling at the basic shape art while still having a lot of really strong coasters. In particular, I really loved this pumpkin coaster, especially from the back of the train chase view as we're jumping down here going through that coast uh that pumpkin there was really phenomenal so some pretty strong rides over here as well as a nice little dark ride there from the huntsman uh overall i'd say this has uh, a little bit of everything a basic shape art lots of uh 
scenic areas to explore with some really good rides. And then last but not least, to kind of cover this a little bit, is the carnival, which has all those vibrant colors, the playfulness, the carnival festivities, but also some very strong rides. While the rides are a little bit more on the shorter end, they were really jam-packed full of triggered events and uh, details and lights. Um, I really love the love ride over there as well, the upside down uh, dark ride. So much content here, just ridiculous amounts of content. This is just, just absurd. Turning reshade off so you can see the whole park in traditional planet coaster graphics. There it is. Holy moly. Uh, four quadrants created by four creators here. And the last thing we can do is go on the train ride. I don't know what the best way to test this is. I guess we'll get on at the Crooked House here. And we have a train here. Is this the Crooked House? I think so. All right. Wow. I gotta turn the volume down so I can hear myself think. Uh, trains are often really loud. I do not know if I rode the train all those many years ago when we featured this park. Probably not. Considering um, between my two recordings, I have two hours and five minutes of recording length. I usually chop out like 10 to 15 minutes because I'm waiting for the coaster to load up and I don't want you guys to have to sit through that. So I try to like make it as concise as possible. But for the most part, there's not a lot to edit out other than just the uh, loading up coasters and and that sort of thing. Um, everything that I see is what you guys see. But there are so many rides that were going on throughout these parks that I'm just waiting for a coaster to load up and I'm chopping that out. It adds up quickly to usually about like 15, 20 minutes. So I'm going to assume I chop out at least 15, 20 minutes of uh, content there, um, which brings us around the same length of the video from five years ago at an hour and 45 minutes. I think this one goes slightly over, especially because we're riding the train ride now, which is something I don't believe I did, if I want to guess. But now we have like such a good frame rate. The parks look so great with the reshade and everything. I find that the, the transport rides end up being very, very, very enjoyable. See, this is not something I would normally cut out. I should not talk at this point. Point. Here we go. <laughs> I've been finding that the uh, transport rides to be very enjoyable on these mega parks as of recently with the like the, the new computer and everything because um, we get to really see everything at, at the park and, and take another look at things and maybe notice things that we didn't see the first time around and it's not a slideshow. And uh, from the looks of things, these creators have done a pretty good job of navigating the train ride through the areas of the park. Yeah, this is really cool. Going through the underbelly of the dark forest there. Now we're going into the dark carnival. Amazing. So overall, I kind of I gave my overall thoughts of the areas and what made each area excel. T favorite ride, I'm going to have to give it to the one in the carnival, that Looney Turns one. Um, oh. I'll skip ahead here. Yeah, see right there, uh, the, because there was a traffic jam, I think I was waiting for about two, three minutes. So that's something I'll end up cutting out there. But yeah, I think my favorite ride goes to the one here in the carnival with the uh, Looney Turns. I really like the acrobatics of it all. It's very, very fun. Also big, big fan of the dueling wooden coasters. Those were monstrous wooden coasters. Um, I really liked Enigmander's pumpkin corkscrew ride. Going through that uh, pumpkin was really, really cool. So I think those are going to be my top three overall. I'd love to know what your guys' top three are and why down in the comments. Um, and then uh, all the different areas had something different to offer, and I kind of already went through those reasons and why. And uh, overall, as a fresh revisit, like a new experience coming back to the park all these many years later, love the fact that I got to bring in the fog in the background and visit majority of the park at the daytime. A lot of these rides actually, in my opinion, shined and excelled during the daytime. Uh, oddly enough, a lot of these spooky parks are best visited at night, but I thought there were so many great color palettes and pops that really shine during the day and because the coasters went so high you got a lot of really good views and perspectives of all of the park and its beauty without it being washed out or drowned out by darkness so it was uh, fun to visit a park at this scale and and do it in a different way than we did the first time while still staying true to the original 
vibe of visiting majority of the park at nighttime as well. This time around, we rode pretty much every single coaster in the park at both... Whoa, did a train just crash? That's cool. Uh, yeah, we rode almost every single coaster at day and night. And I'm pretty sure, I want to guess, the first time around when we feature this, we just did the entire park start to finish all at night. So being able to refeature things and do things differently the second time almost created for a whole brand new experience. Plus, obviously, we're featuring it with a proper frame rate, guests in the park, 4K resolution. It just a completely revamped and enhanced experience without actually modifying or changing anything in, in the park at all which is um, incredible, really, really incredible. I'm gonna see if I could jump on that train. I think this is the one. It was going into a cave. Yeah, that'll <laughs> avoid me from having to edit a bunch of stuff. But yeah, even this train ride, look at this. There's all these like hidden nooks. So far, like where's a train that just crashed past there. Uh, it's taking us through some really interesting terrain and landscapes with triggered events, as you just saw there with the rolling boulder and some really interesting side scenes. Um, all of which you don't really see. It's at the back end of the park. You don't see from the footpath. You don't see from the coasters. So the train ride alone is a full experience that offers something completely unique from which we've seen from anything else. So shout out to these creators for making an, uh, a thoroughly enjoyable train ride. And I'm um, going to guess there's a crack in there. I didn't ride it the first time around. So great to come back all these years later and experience something that we may or may not have missed um but yeah that was great i think this is back to where we started right or are we in the um no it's not we have to get into the spooky house so i think we have one more stop to go and this is going to take us through the spooky woods back into the Crooked Village. I feel like that's backwards though. Wouldn't you go from the Crooked Village to the Spooky Woods? Unless it's gonna loop around. All right, off we go again. Now, we didn't see any of this, did we? I, uh, sometimes when I'm talking, I have a hard time paying attention to what I'm looking at. Hence why I go up so many exits. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like texting while driving, right? Not a good idea. Yeah, this is really neat. So I guess, yeah, we loop through here and then turn around and go into... I'm going to have to take a look at the uh, track from a bird's eye view because it definitely doesn't just do a circle. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. We're back here. So we did, we did double back on some of the content. But taking a look at the hell train, if we turn it off and then lift it into the... Uh, how do I do this? Where's the uh, move tool? Don't normally do this, but I'm curious. All right, yeah, yeah, look at that. It, it, it weaves in and out. It's not a complete loop. It has some detours, but it has like an interesting kind of pass through as it goes through some of the terrain and stuff like that. Really well done. A solid train ride as I, oh my God, now I'm just I'm gonna crash the game. Undo, oh boy. Ugh. <laughs> Whoops, uh, I might've crashed the game. <laughs> Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That was a tragic kingdom. Oh, revisit all so many years later. The uh, created by Games for Tom, White Cider, Enigmadra, and Kim Attacks. Hope you guys enjoyed it more the second time. Hope you enjoyed the new and improved uh, view of everything. Hope you had just as much fun as you did the first time, if not more. And I, I definitely hope it was worth the refeature. I saw many, many people in the polls and the comments and the community tabs and even the comments of other videos saying, please go back and revisit, revisit Tragic Kingdom. I still think this one holds true as the best spooky park ever created in Planet Coaster, which is kind of crazy to say, considering all these years later, no one has really come along and made a mega spooky park to this scale with this many rides and and it definitely took at least four people to do it. So still reigning champion here today. Therefore, 100% worthy of a refeature. So again, shout out to these four creators for making such a phenomenal content and allowing us to share that with you guys here on this platform. So if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a share on social media. Give it a like for engagement. Drop a comment for engagement. All that good stuff. Let's try to get it some views as it is new and improved. And it deserves to be seen yet again. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching i hope you have a spooktacular day and we'll see you all in the next halloween video bye now